Hey gang, how's it going? Todd Nock here for another live art stream um, or an art live stream. You can say the words any way you want. I've heard it both ways. So, so glad y'all are here. I am home from a big trip to New York City this past week. It was a last minute trip to uh, meet up with Marvel. Uh, very excited for some stuff to announce in 2020, but I can't say anything. I gotta let Marvel say everything first. So stay tuned, because as, as soon as they say stuff, I'll be able to say stuff. So I'm very excited about that. But I'm pretty much over the jet lag, had a good night's sleep. I thought, you know what? I gotta get a, a live stream in today. So I was thinking about some of the questions I get from a lot of young artists. And a lot of people are saying that their characters, they feel are kind of stiff. They feel their characters aren't as fluid as they'd like them to be. So I thought, you know what? Today might be a good day to show you some exercises and how to help loosen up your, your figures. And it's a really quick, fun exercise. It's a great um, exercise that I learned in art school and really helped me. It's called gesture drawing. Now I'd have live um, life drawing classes where we'd have actual uh, figure models come in that we'd have to draw and they'd get in these poses and then we just had to sketch out the pose. We didn't have to worry about perfect anatomy. We didn't have to worry about perfect details. It was all about capturing the, the flow and the movement of the figure. And you can do this by looking at photos. You can pull up photos of like athletes or, or martial artists or dancers or gymnasts or whatever, you know, people that are actually moving in really cool ways. You can pull up photo reference if, if you like, or you can go straight from uh, just your memory or imagination. And I'm gonna go from memory and imagination here today, uh, just cause I don't have any photo reference here available. So, uh, cause my iPad is still packed in all my, uh, my uh, travel gear from, from getting in last night. So let's flip the camera around and let's get to drawing. Gotta reposition the rig. Here we go. Just move the clamp around. Hope everyone's doing well today. I will try to respond to comments or questions, but a lot of this is gonna be instruction. So uh, do make sure you follow me on Instagram for my live Q and A's that I do on there every now and again, my 10 minute Q and A shows. So um, I've, I'll try, I was considering maybe using several different pencils for this just to, just to mix it up. Um, let me readjust my desk there. Okay. so. Uh, you often see me using my Uni Kuratoga mechanical pencil. It's a 0.3, a very fine tipped uh, lead, HB lead. I also have my 0.7 mechanical uh, pencils, 0.7 lead. My Pilot Eno, um, my Pilot Color Eno, light blue pencil and red. So we'll, we'll try utilizing these uh, for these gesture drawings. But first we'll just start with some graphite here. I've got a nine inch by 12 inch piece of uh, Canson Bristol Board, Canson Strathmore, those are my two go-to brands for Bristol Board. And uh, Bristol Board is what we use to draw comics on, but we draw comics on 11 by 17 inch Bristol Board. So with gesture drawing, it's real quick. So, so say I wanna draw like a Wolverine character, or let's just say Wolverine. Usually he's hunkered down. So I'm, I'm putting his head down and his shoulders are gonna fall behind there. His neck is gonna be hidden by his, his, um, his head. And this is, might be a bit of an advanced uh, pose to be doing. But uh, rough in his, his shoulders there, rib cage. Now, this is a, a bit, a, can be a great exercise in learning, learning or getting used to uh, some foreshortening or experimenting with some foreshortening. So his bicep going back there to his forearm, to his fist. And the other arm, bicep, tricep, forearm, fist. And then of course some claws would be popping off there. And then the legs, because he's hunkered down, are gonna be kind of a little more in a battle stance, a little more widespread. So kind of oval shapes for the thighs, down to like baseball-like knees, calves, shins, feet. Now Wolverine is a short guy, five foot three, so I'm kind of giving him stockier features here. And so boom, there is a Wolverine gesture that I can now base up my, uh, my drawing on if I, if I like this pose. So it's just a matter of just doing these, just doing these for a warm up. 
Like, I would encourage, for those of you serious in doing comic book art, try to do at least 10 a day. If you're not used to doing this, do 10 a day. Do t like, sit down and just spend 5-10 minutes and whip out 10, 10 gestures. Or let's say someone's flying. So I, I always like to start with the head. It's just something I've always done. I know some people do the chest first and then put the head on top. So having studied it, it's just not the way I really go doing the chest to uh, and then head. I just never seem to get the head to be the right size if I do the chest first. So I just like to start with the head and move on. So. Um, so you want to, you know, continue to study your anatomy, but because um, that will kind of help you in knowing how to make your shapes. But in this, it's a lot of it is just about capturing that flow. You want to get that spine going through there, and and then you uh, kind of let the body kind of follow along. So the so we have like this character. Maybe it's like a kind of a bit of a I don't know, maybe a bit of a Superman type character who would fly like this, you know, have one leg a little bit forward, another leg a little bit back. But now mind you, I did not draw like this when I was a young artist, when I started learning to do this. This is years of practice. This is a, doing this for years and years that I've evolved to just kind of whip out these, these gestures. So if you, if you, you find your gestures aren't looking like the ones I'm doing now, that's okay. You are, just getting started. You're just now starting to try and just do the best you can and just keep at it because it will evolve over time. It's just, we got to keep practicing, got to keep, keep with the repetition of doing it. So it's just filling, try filling up a page. Let's try drawing a, a speedster. So see there, I got the head, just a quick oval for the head, little ear there where the lightning bolt thing would be coming off. We're gonna want that that flow. We want him moving forward, so his body is gonna be, his chest is gonna be pushing forward. So one one shoulder back, the other arm is coming forward. And then when we draw on the legs, whichever, we do the opposite of the arms. So if the, the right arm is forward, that means the left leg comes forward. The right arm and the right leg don't ever go forward at the same time. It's called contropasto. It means opposite arm and leg go forward. And then the, so if the left arm is back, that means the left leg is going back. This is just the natural way to, for humans to walk and run. So, and it gives your character more power in the gesture. Let's see, and then we can do standing figures. Oftentimes I like to drop that spine in. If I know the direction of what I'm seeing in my head, drop that spine in and then I can build the rest of my body, the figure, in there based on the spine. And it helps keep some flow and movement going correctly for um, where I want to put everything, kind of has the character's weight in the illustration a little more accurate to where I want, want it to be. I stand a better chance of capturing that accuracy if I know where my spine is and where they'd be putting their weight.
So see, really quick scribbly gestures. I'm not, I'm not overthinking it. And it's, it's hard. It takes practice to learn to not overthink because we have to learn the rules and then we get them so ingrained that they become second nature. This is why as comic artists, one of our biggest, biggest advices is biggest bits of advice. I think it's the more proper way to say that is to practice. You want to make this, all this stuff second nature. It's got to be ingrained much like in sports, you know, like in, in American rules, football, a quarterback throws thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of passes, you know, so Aaron Rodgers can like chuck a Hail Mary to the end zone and stand a better chance at his receiver catching it because he's done it so often. It's, he doesn't have to, his, 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 his thoughts are like lightning flat, fast reflexes. It's just like, boom, it's just like right there. Just go for it. And uh, it's kind of almost uh, very similar in art. It's like when it's time to draw, it's just like, boom, I know, I know what I want to do because I've done it thousands of times, maybe hundreds of thousands of times, maybe even millions of times. I wish I knew how many of these, how many times have I roughed out a figure over the course of my career alone, not even including my youth, trying to draw, learn, you know, learn how to draw characters. So let's switch up. Uh, Pencils here. Let's try some red pencil here. Let's try drawing a female character. So we'll try a female superhero. Maybe like a Wonder Woman style character. A little bit more of an hourglass sort of shape with the waist and the hips. Good to give a sense of the flow of the hair there. So just real quick, just kind of building the figure. And with, with continued practice and doing these gestures, if you're able to do 10 gestures a day, I think you're going to find that your characters and just doing quick gestures, you don't have to spend all day doing these. Just spend 10 minutes if you can. Just 10 minutes, throwing down as many gestures as you can. I suggest try to do 10 if you can. If you can only do five, that's okay. If you can only do one, that's still okay. One is better than zero. But if you can do about 10, I think you'll do yourself a service in, in your art goals to get, and then let's see, like, and then she has her lasso here, and then it's coming around like that. So we see we just kind of just quick lines, just not overthinking it. We can always make adjustments if we need to, but see if you can get that, what you can get with that initial just throw down of the line and, um, and see if you can catch, capture that spark and energy. Because you can always hone, hone it in later or as you go. Let's see. And you can do really, really teeny tiny figures like Like this is really small. It's just real basic. And I've used to do layouts really teeny tiny like this. It just shows me where is the character? What is the general pose of the character? And then sometimes that's all I need. Do I suggest doing more from reference or more from imagination? I say both. Reference, referencing real life is good, especially when you're learning th these, um, these, uh, 
anatomy skills. You know, you want to learn from real life, but then our imagination, imagination lets us break the rules, lets us come up with more dynamic, exciting, larger than life um, illustrations. So, um, so I think it's good to do both. I utilize both. I love to draw from my imagination. I like to think of a character, think of a pose, and and then and then just kind of go for it. But sometimes if I need to draw a muscle or an arm in a certain way, it's like the pose I have, I'm not quite sure if I can figure out how the muscles would bend and twist. That's why I look to, to uh, some real life reference uh, so that I can uh, get the, the accuracy that I want, but, uh, but try not to lose that larger than life aspect. So it's, I think it's a dance between the two. I, don't, I, I would say don't go strictly, this, when you're drawing comics, you don't have time to look up reference for every pose of every character for every panel. A lot of times we're just going strictly off our imagination and just running with it and really it can be a lot of energy, but sometimes we do need that specific reference for maybe a more challenging pose. Let's try a woman standing. You know, and, and, and learning the, the basics of anatomy. And you can look up any sort of uh, life drawing sort of book. There's like the classics like Bern Hogarth, Andrew Loomis, or um, George Bridgman. There are a lot that are taught in schools. I, my uh, life drawing instructor taught from uh, Bern Hogarth, Dynamic Anatomy. So you can learn like the basics. And there are a lot of great comic book ones too. Uh, artist Mike Hawthorne just kickstarted his life drawing book, and uh, I got the digital P PDF of the book, and um, that's that's really great resource as well. That's very comic book oriented, um, but learning the the basics of how far from the head to the shoulders, or from the shoulders to the breast line, from the breast line to the the waist, the hips, how far how far how wide, how 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 far down do the arms go, uh, like where does the elbow line up with the torso. And then from the forearm down to the hand, where does the hand meet up? So when you've got those sort of uh, those sort of mathematics kind of figured out and done a bajillion times in in your brain, created that muscle memory, then you can just kind of your your brain is equipped now to take what you've studied and looked at a bajillion times and imagine it. Like, um, like, can you imagine a little red ball? I say a little red ball. I've just given you some words. A little red ball. How many of you see a picture of a little red ball in your mind? How many of you see the words little red ball in your mind? We all imagine in different ways to one degree or another. Um, thoughts can come into our head. Maybe we see pictures. Maybe we see words. Maybe we sense. Maybe it's more of a sense. Um, I'm a little bit of a hybrid of all three. Sometimes I see the picture, but it's more of like a ghost image. Uh, it's very, very faint, very foggy for me. And then I figure it out as I go, as I put lines down on the paper. It's not often always a clear picture inside my head. Sometimes I see it as words. Sometimes I just got a sense, a vibe for what it is I want to draw. And the journey for me is actually throwing lines down on paper to, um, to find that finished final image. So it's definitely a process for me. Let's try the, the blue here. Now a lot of animators use the red pencil or the blue pencils to, in, in their animation uh, sketch stages. I'm not in animation, I don't know why they do it. I like to use blue uh, when I'm breaking down stuff for comics because it's non-reproduction. When I So when I scan things in, um, my scanner doesn't really see the blue, so it'll only see the graphite, so it helps me get a cleaner scan. Maybe like a crouching pose, like a spidey pose. Let's try that. So I kind of have a ghost image in my head. I kind of know a, a scrouch, uh, crouching spidey poses just from all the comics I've read, 
all the movies I've seen, and all the Spidey cosplayers that exist out there often do poses like this. So I kind of have a ghost image of what I've seen in my life, but now I'm going to utilize my imagination and my process of throwing lines down on paper to create my own rendition of that. So we got a foreshortened thigh. It's a very foreshortened thigh right here. To the knee and then down to the, the foot. So that thigh is really kind of hidden behind that knee as it goes back towards his pelvis. And after this pose, maybe I can try to discuss a little bit of uh, foreshortening and, and dealing with shapes. So the way I have this pose here, this leg and foot kind of lines up with that hand. So I kind of readjust the hand so that things don't get too clumped together. Always allowing myself the freedom to readjust. Things don't have to be written in stone or drawn in stone. I have the freedom to edit and make different choices. Not so locked in that I don't have that flexibility. The flexible are not easily broken, so be try to be as flexible as you can with what your expectations are in your art and allow the freedom for the art to kind of take you on a journey and, and come up with something new or different than what you might have initially imagined. Because it might be an even better solve to the puzzle. Let's give them a little spidey eyes. So like with foreshortening, so like with an arm, we have like that kind of upper shoulder arm, bicep, tricep. Let me push the camera in here a little closer for y'all. Because that blue can be a little hard to see, huh? So bicep, tricep, that little muscle there that in, splits up the two. I, I can't remember all the names of the muscles but you don't have to know the names to draw them. Oops, I lost my lead there. There we go. And there's that forearm muscle, some striations. So it kind of, and then it tapers down to the wrist. And then you have the hand, which is kind of a little bit of a more of a rhombus type shape. What brand of red and blue lead am I using? I'm using the Pilot Color Eno, E-N-O. Pilot Color Eno mechanical pencils. I got mine off of jetpens.com. This is not a plug or a sponsorship by Jetpens, nor Pilot Color Eno. It's just what I use and where I got them in case you wanna get them as well. I, I received nothing for this. This is not a paid advertisement or sponsorship in any way at all for either the website or the products. I wanna make sure I say that up front. It just happens to be the tools I use and where I got them. Um, Cause I know sometimes people wanna check them out as well, but I received nothing from Pilot. I received nothing from JetPens. So, so we got the arm there. Now, if we look at the shapes and we wanna do foreshortening, like so say the hand is Maybe it's like a, like Havoc from the X-Men and he's going to throw out a plasma blast. So he's got his fist up. We want to foreshorten back. So this is not quite really gesture drawing because we're... So that forearm, this, this shape here is translating to this here. It's like that this tapered off section is kind of almost hidden behind his fist. And then we have his bicep, which is a bit hidden behind the forearm there. So it's learning these shapes and learning how do you move them around. So for
kind of pointing out where each shape has gone. Probably should have used a different lead here. So that one's there. This one's here. Tricep there. And forearm right there. And hand right there. Does this make any sense? <laughs> Probably a bit cluttered, but hopefully you got a sense of what I was, was doing there with the foreshortening. That goes for arms, legs, bodies, the torso, the head over the neck, like I did with Wolverine, the Wolverine shape up over here. So let's let's try just throwing in some more gestures. How about a swinging Spidey? Spidey swinging. Let's let's grab that red and do a shot of Spidey swinging. Now, having drawn Spider-Man for a lot of years, I've drawn a lot of Spidey swinging poses. And it's a lot of fun to draw him swinging because you get a lot of flow to his body. I got his legs. Let's put a leg over here. And the thigh to the knee. Then the calf, the shin, the other foot. And then we'll throw a web line off there. And then it trails off like that. So there's a Spidey swinging pose. Quick gesture. Utilizing a little foreshortening. We foreshorten from the knee here as the thigh comes down from the knee. And then it, the leg is going back a little bit. And this, this one arm is overlapping. So we see a little bit of that that lat there as the arm kind of comes forward. The other arm holding onto the web line is coming down and then over, but it's hidden behind that other forearm. And that's how we get the spidey, spidey um, pose. So many different spidey poses one can do. Um, let's see, what's another pose we can do? We have running, how about a jumping pose? So let's do like a Psylocke. See Psylocke's jumping down from like some sort of height in a ninja sort of way. So the hair is going to flow from above because she's coming down. So the hair is going to flow upwards as she pulls, as her body pulls downwards. So there's going to be some foreshortening here, like the head overlapping the shoulders. Her body kind of coming back, waist, the hips. So the thighs are going to come forward to the knee, and then the calves come down. The thigh forward to the calves and the, and the calf coming back. Give her a sword. Maybe the her little sash belt flowing behind her. So just real quick. We don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about all the exactness of it. Now, mind you, as I said before, I've been doing this for many, many, many years of my life. So I've, I've put in thousands of hours, tens of thousands of hours doing this. And many of you are just starting your journey. So you're just getting the, uh, you're just getting your, starting to get your hours in. So we have a jumping, jumping Psylocke. Um, 
Let's say you have a character sitting. Let's try drawing a character sitting down. Let's, let's use the red over here. Say they're sitting at like a comfy chair. They're not, and this is a teeny tiny layout here, or sketch here, which I'd often do for my layout. So their, their body's gonna slouch a little bit, you know, because we don't necessarily always sit up straight in a comfy chair. I have one leg come here and then the other leg is crossed. So it comes up and over. Maybe they're greeting someone. Well, hello. There you go. There's a guy sitting in a chair. Uh, uh, some sort of uh, lazy boy like uh, lounge chair. Very, very comfortably, very casually. And um, let's see. Let's finish this off here with, let's do something that, with a little more detail for fun with this leftover space here. Let's draw, let's draw a character's face. So there's that bit of a circle, then you pull down the, the jawline to the chin. It's kind of just a very basic sort of face, basic head shape that most any hero would have. I like to figure out the sides. Then from the top of the head to the chin is the eye line. From, or midway from the top of the head to the chin is the eye line, generally. From the middle of, midway from the eye line to the chin is the nose line, generally. And from the nose line to the chin is the mouth line, which often lines up with the, the jaw line coming down. Let me put in a couple of almond shapes here. Kind of a little ghost eye right there in the middle, and then another one. So this kind of helps get the correct proportions between the eyes. It's like one eye, two eye, three eye. If you put one eye the same size as the other eyes right there in the middle, you're gonna have some pretty accurate spacing. You can have eyes set wider, you can have eyes set closer to each other um, if you want, depending on the person you're drawing. And the eyebrow, eyebrows, right there. Hairline tends to start from halfway from the eye line to the top of the head. Generally where the hairline could be if the person has a full head of hair. Uh, from the top of the eyebrow down to the chin, or to the nose line, that's generally where the ears are. That's where the nose, the nostrils, sort of a, kind of a V for the tip of the nose, bring some lines out to the side for the sides of the nostrils. That can be kind of a basic way to kind of get the, the nostrils going. Again, nose, nose shapes could be very varied in, in their, uh, their shapes. Big hunk and schnoz, really slim nose, little petite nose. Now I like to pull from the eyes, I like to pull straight down from the center of the eyes to um, get the sides of where the mouths go. So that each side of the mouth. That keeps my, my mouths from getting too terribly wide. Little cheekbones right there at that little nose line part. From the nose down, that's where that little trough is from our nose to our top lip. 
So that kind of helps me know where the top of the lip is. Bottom lip, sometimes I'll put in a little circle there for the chin, kind of help me know exactly where the chin is. Sometimes I'll put little circles here under the eyes to really kind of help define where my cheeks are. Let's rough in a hairline here. So I'm pulling from the center of the head over to that where I set my side of the hair, hair side of the head guideline. So I can come down here, then a little bit over the eyebrow, then down to the sideburns. This is this is kind of what I do. This is kind of more of a Peter Parker sort of look that I'm doing right now here. So let's just say I'm drawing Peter Parker here. Bring some necklines down. Okay. So now when I want to do the hair, since I know where the top of the head is, remember this is critical, to draw the full head in here. I don't want to just draw a face then draw hair on top because I might not have enough space to show where the head is. If I, if I draw too short, if I make the hair too close down, then it doesn't look like he has a full skull. So now, now that I know where his full skull is, I can start to rough in his hair. And he kind of has that kind of little bit of a tousled sort of hairstyle. You know, has some nice wave to it. Usually one piece of hair kind of flips down. Sometimes he has two, if you're drawing like the 1970s style, Peter Parker. So he can either have one on each side or just, just the one. We're just going to do the one here for now. But since I know where my hairline is, I can have these lines curve towards that line. And I'm putting enough hair to where we know there is a skull underneath that head. And it keeps it very believable. kind of rough in some of those folds of the ear. That was always a challenge for me as a young artist, was trying to figure out those folds, those little ear canal fold thingies. Then we can put in the irises, the color part of the eye. It's called the iris. Oops, I just snapped that lead. I do that all the time. Who knows how much wet I lace just, waste just from snapping it because I'm pressing down too hard. And then we have the uh, pupil, which is the black part of the eye, right there in the center of the iris. A little eyelid. Let's give him a little spidey colors color here, just for the fun of it. Little cross webs there. We can add a little more detail to the nose there. So this is just a quick, rough, blue line pencil sketch of a Peter Parker face. You can make adjustments. It's like, oh, I just need to add a little more hair on this side here. I put the hairline a little too far away. Just for fun, I'm just going to take this red pencil here. Sometimes it's fun just to, you know, just do a little cross hatching on the side, just as a little background. When you're working on a piece, just, oh, you know what, just throwing a little cross hatching over here, really 
really let the the head pop off the page. So just a little bit like that. So this is just kind of what we did here for the past, well, it looks like about 40 minutes. Just kind of walking you through some gesture drawings. Now, hopefully you can um, practice your, your gesture drawings. Start incorporating this into your art day. I'm just throw my autograph on here and the date I did this, November 2nd, 2019. And this can be a great exercise. Continued doing this and you will hopefully find that your figure work becomes a lot more fluid. There's a lot more movement. Your characters aren't as stiff. You're feeling the motion, because that's what this is all about. Not trying to create the, um, the exact body muscles proportions exactly perfect at this stage. What you want to do is just capture that flow. Capture that flow, throw the lines down. Just find that spine, and, and carry that movement through. Carry that movement and let that, let that energy flow through. Nice energy flowing through. So, um, and it's okay to work from reference. If you need to use photo reference is ideal. Uh, referencing your favorite comic book artist is understandable uh, when we're young artists. Um, they're kind of, it's kind of like our training wheels in, in getting used to you know, kind of learning. That's how I taught myself, was looking at my favorite artists as a youth. I think we all do that as youths. All of us professional artists, to one degree or another, we're influenced, inspired, or we learn from looking at our favorite comic book artists. But as we move forward, as our skills start to level up and mature, we start to do that less, because we're starting to find our own style. Our own style starts to emerge, probably based off of what we learned from following our favorite masters. That is totally okay, totally understandable, but you start to diverge into your own style. It starts to become signature you. And um, working from real life, the more I think we work from real life, the better chance we have at developing our own style because we're now translating the real world into our fantasy world style. Um, whether it be a cartoony style, whether it be a re realistic style, it's still a fantasy world. And, um, and then when we've worked with real, real life so much, or looking at photo reference, even looking at comic book reference, we do that so much, it's now ingrained in our heads and we've trained ourselves how to do this to become, uh, for it to become second nature. So that all of this came straight out of my head because I've done it a bajillion times. Let me flip the camera around here and we'll sign off for, the, for this broadcast. Hey gang, let me just plug the rig back, or plug the camera back into the rig. There we go. There's my Marvel 25th anniversary poster. Y'all see in most all of my live streams. Love that poster, I've had it since I was a kid. That's 25 years from Fantastic Four number one. That, was, that came out in 1986. So technically from the Marvel's, the first Marvel publishing comic, not going all the way back to the timely comic era, which is the 80th anniversary here this year. So it's 80 years of Marvel going all the way back to the golden age. This was, poster was the Silver Age, 1961 to 1986, 25 year anniversary, not from the Golden Age, just to make that clear. So, gang, I'll post a shot of this on my social media. Make sure you swing by my Instagram or my Twitter. Um, you can find me as at Todd Knock on both of those uh, platforms. And um, I'll, when I, uh, once this video uploads or processes all, to my uh, catalog of videos, I'll make sure I go in and add the links to my social media in the description below. And you can find my social media links in the description below of all my videos. So gang, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I gotta take off, but I uh, hope to see you again real soon. Hope you have a great Saturday. Keep on drawing, keep having fun. Take care.